Today we'll be making this beautiful long cardigan on our central knitting machine. For this pattern you can be using all, also the Adi Express knitting machine with the 46 needles, okay? In this tutorial I'm going to be showing you three different ways to measure yourself or if you want to make to another person and to make the right size for this person you want to make and as well or make the right size for you just based in uh, these three different ways. Cardigan is very very cozy and soft and it's very very warm for the winter. It's a beautiful piece. Here is the bottom ribbon. It doesn't even fit on my screen. Here's the bottom ribbon. So the ribbons they are all manually made, okay? They're not made on the central machine, but I'm gonna be explaining you exactly how to make the ribbons. My name is Fabiana and every week I bring a new tutorial for you guys either on knitting machine patterns or crochet. And so for this long cardigan that we're gonna make in our circular knitting machine, I'm gonna be using eight rows of these three colors here. This is a very basic acrylic yarn, as it says here, it's 100 grams and it has 218 yards or 200 meters. A little circular needle for the sleeves, this is only for the sleeves, and you can get one that's a little longer than this one. If you're not, if you're a beginner, it's a little hard to work with this one, so you can get a 40 centimeters, this is a 25, okay? And then we're gonna need this one for the bottom ribbing and the neck ribbing. It's a hundred centimeters long and they're both five millimeters, okay? You can use a 4.5 millimeters as well. This is the gauge calculator. We're gonna need to calculate the gauge and calculate the full size of our sweater. For this one, you can be using only a ruler. If that's what you have at home, you don't need to have this. And a, a yarn winder, if you wanna make uh, uh, balls and cakes of your yarns, easier to slide through the cakes to use on these machines. And I'm also gonna be using my Centro 48 and my Adi 46. You can be using either one of them if you don't have both. You can be using the Adi, even the Adi 46, or the Centro 48 and then scissors, okay? So the very next step now is to make these leaves. So uh, I make these leaves first because it's just a tube anyway, and because I made so many sweaters, I know they are normally from 80 rows to 90 rows. If you make a sleeve that's too long, you can always remove and open a few rows after, okay? So I'm gonna start with my waist yarn. I'm gonna make four rows with waist yarn, and then I'm gonna make 80 rows with gray color that I chose. And then with that, then I'm gonna calculate the gauge of the whole sweater, okay? Not gonna show you the full process because it's the same, it's just cast on for a tube and make a tube with 80 rows. On my central machine, 48, okay? I want this sleeve to be very uh, large for this uh, long sweater. I'm also gonna change colors around here somewhere, so just make sure you, if you are making the same design, change the colors somewhere in the pattern. Now that I have both sleeves here, and I cast them off both with waist yarn, okay? And then later on, to make this ribbing, I use this circular needle, and I put it through every single stitch. So I didn't disconnect the row, because then um, you can make straight away, you can start these first two rows which are made with the same color, okay? So both my sleeves, they are 80 rows long with a few more rows here that have five, five to six centimeters this ribbing, okay? The sleeve itself has 
48 centimeters. So to make this ribbing, I'm gonna slide this little needle through. You can actually cast off from the machine with a longer needle if you have a longer one. This one here, it doesn't go all the way from one side to the other of the machine, so I tried once and it didn't really... I lost, I lost a lot of stitches because of that, so... That's what I'm doing now to then start the ribbing. And you can also use crochet ribbing if you want as well. Okay, all you have to do is just bind off the stitches with crochet and then make a few crochet ribbon rows. After the last stitch, just remove this yarn here. Place a marker on the beginning because it's gonna look everything very similar. And then you can start your ribbing. So we're gonna, I'm making one by one. You can make two by two if you want. It's up to you. And so I'm going to knit the first stitch and I'm going to pull the next one. Knit and pull. Knit and pull. Okay, and when you go all around, the knit the pearl stitches are the ones with the little thing and the V ones. The V's are the knitted stitches, so you don't miss it. So I'm gonna be doing all that rows with this. And I'm gonna share the full, full pattern down the description below where everything's gonna be uh, documented for you to, to follow, okay? And it looks really nice, doesn't it? So that's what I'm doing now. And then after this, we are going to make the back panels, okay? So just to show you guys how to finish this ribbon. It's the same way I always do. But so um, where I have my marker, I know that's the beginning of the row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one and two knitted stitches from that first one. And then I'm going to grab the second one and pull it on top of that first one, this way. And then knit the next one and then pull the second one on top of the first one. And then repeat this all around until I finish with one loop on the other side. So do, just repeat all around and then we're gonna make the next step. So now that we have these leaves ready, how can you make the right size cardigan for yourself? So there's three ways of measuring to get the right size cardigan for you. One of them is to measure yourself, get the measurements of your body to make the right size. The second option is to get a free pattern like we did before. If you are making for somebody else, you get this pattern. And normally the patterns, they come with all the sizes after they're finished. So uh, you calculate, you're gonna use the size of the pattern to calculate if this is for somebody else. And you can also measure another garment that fits you and that you like and use that as a pattern to calculate the size as well. So now let's calculate the size with these leaves. To do that, we're gonna, I'm going to use this gauge calculator, but you can also use the ruler if that's what you have at home. It's four inches or 10 centimeters by four inches or 10 centimeters, so four by four or 10 by 10. And then all you do is you're gonna count these little Vs here, this way, which is gonna be the rows, or the length of your of your cardigan and you're gonna count this way which is gonna be the number of stitches or the width of your sweater so I'm gonna show you here how I cal how I calculated on um, 
on the screen, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna count the number of rows and divide by 10 or by 4. And then you're gonna see, let's say you're using the free pattern, you're gonna see what's the length of the design there. And then you're gonna divide, so you're gonna divide the number Let's say we have 20 by 10, so it's two rows by each centimeters. And then you're going to see how many centimeters you have on your pattern, and you're going to multiply by that. So in my case, I had nine, uh, it was 90 centimeters, so 2 times 90 was 180 rows long for my panels. Now, to know the right width for your pattern, for your cardigan in this case, what you're gonna do is you're gonna divide the number of stitches that we have from here to here and divide by 10 as well, or by 4 inches if making inches. And then you see the full size of the pattern, the free pattern or your the garment you have that's similar to the pattern you want, and then you multiply the number of stitches by the size you want, which then I'm going to divide by 2 because I need to make 2 panels for each size. So I like to calculate on a piece of paper, and that's what I did here. So 90 centimeters, 170 to 180 rows, and um, I ended up making 39 stitches for the back, okay? The front panels, they are going to be smaller, so I'm going to cast on 39 stitches with the waist yarn. Now, if you're wondering why I'm using this machine and not the center, you can use the center as well. It's just the edge machine counts on the panel mode because I start always start on either one. So I'm not actually using the panel mode, which would be here. I'm using the top mode. So I'm finished there because I think my yarn's over. I don't think I have enough for another row. So just three rows with the waist yarn. And now we're gonna put the normal yarn, and then I'm gonna be working 180 rows like we calculated before to have 90 centimeters of sweater. So just put your yarn through there, put the counter back to zero if using the edge machine, and work 180 rows on the panel mode. Guys, if you don't know how to use panels, I have a panel course that I'm gonna leave on the description below. It's a two hours for full course that you can make to learn how to make panels and how to make perfect edges as well, okay? So that will be there. I'm not gonna teach you how to use a panel this time. Otherwise, this tutorial will be too long, but... So let's work these two panels and then we're gonna seam the middle with the mattress stitch. And I'm gonna leave the link for the mattress stitch on the description below as well, okay? So once you have the, the both uh, mattress stitched, um, what you can do to calculate the neck cut is just to put this, put this whole thing in front of your body and just place a marker when you, where you want the V cut to start. I like the V cut to be very way down and this because it is a long cardigan i think the longer the neck cut it is the better so that's that's where you're gonna start decreasing stitches so you're gonna make the front panels are gonna be straight all the way to around here which is like 30 30 something centimeters and then you want to start the neck cut so what I did was I actually counted the number of rows I had here, but you also you can also do that looking at your gauge as well and how many rows 30 centimeters are on your gauge. It's uh, 30 times 2, 60 rows in this case. So uh, we have 180, so 
180 less 60, which is the neck cut. It's gonna be 120, so we're gonna make 120 straight rows for the front panels before we start decreasing, okay? And so how many stitches you actually wanna decrease? That's gonna depend on how long you want your shoulder to be. So I like around this for my shoulder. So I'm gonna count the number of stitches I have here. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Okay, 12 stitches here. And I'm gonna make the front panels smaller because remember we have this ribbon here size. So I'm going to make the back panels with 39 stitches and the front panels with six, I counted six stitches less here. So it's gonna be around 33 stitches for the front panel. And I'm going to decrease four more. Okay, so six, uh, it's gonna be 10 stitches less here. So I'm going to have this left for the shoulder once I seam both shoulders together on the top, okay? So that's what we are going to, to do now. It's the front panel, starting with 33, 33 stitches and 120 rows without decreasing nothing. And then we're gonna decrease four stitches in every, every four rows or something like that. So to start the front panels of this long cardigan, what we're gonna need, what we're gonna do is start working casting on stitches with the waist yarn. And I'm gonna cast on 33 stitches starting from needle one if using the edge machine. So I'm going to be making three or four rows with the waist yarn and then I'm gonna change to the white color that I chose. Okay, so we're gonna change, I'm basically changing the color here. And now I'm going to I'm going to work 120 rows for me on a size medium. If you were making any other size and you calculated your size before, then make the number of rows for your size, okay? Now I have here 120 rows, here, 120 rows, and I'm gonna start decreasing now. So I'm going to decrease the panels, both panels mirror, which means that this panel here, I'm gonna decrease on the beginning of the row, which is would be your needle number one. I'm gonna start decreasing on this side, and then to make the other side of this v-neck cut, we need to decrease at the end of the row, okay? So it's gonna be a similar process, but just at the end and on the beginning. Okay, now I got to the point where I need to decrease. I'm gonna remove the yarn from the yarn guide and I'm going to make these three first stitches here. Just release them from the needles. I'm gonna put it closer here. Release them from the needles and then to decrease stitches on each, any, any knitting machi machine is gonna be the same process, okay? And then I'm gonna put closer so you guys can see. You're gonna remove the three first loops from the needles. And as you can see, the fourth one, it's still inside the needle, so it's not gonna come out, which is good. So then go back all the way until that needle is halfway up only, okay? You can see it's halfway up. So it's easier to put the loops back in, okay? And then I'm going to remove this first one, put the second one in the inside the hook, inside the peg, and the, thir the third one on top of it. And this, so we have a perfect decreasing of the stitches. And then put that last loop inside the first needle and put the yarn back on the guide. And make sure this both loops are way down 
on the bottom of the needle so you don't actually drop them. I'm going to make, now that I decreased, I'm going to make six more and then I'm going to decrease again. So I'm going to decrease four times for this neck cut, but you can decrease as many as you want from four to seven, around four to around seven, if you want it more, less space on your, less uh, stitches on your shoulder, or you can't, you, you don't need to decrease at all if you're just beginning to make panels on your machine and you think this is too hard, just don't decrease any, make it straight and then just seam the shoulders and make a, a smaller space on the neck, that's gonna work as well, okay? So I'm gonna keep making until I have 180 rows here. Now I finished both panels, as you can see they are mirrored. And now the next step, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to graft stitch each of the pen, each of the shoulder parts to, the, um, to my back piece here. So I'm gonna be grafting this side with this side and the other side with the other side. And so I'm going to put a link on the description below for the full tutorial of the grafting stitch if you don't know yet, otherwise this, uh, this video is going to be too long. And so this is our next step, I'm going to be doing this now. So the reason why, this is the reason why I left the tail, we can attach another tail with a knot to make to start the graft stitch and make sure as well you have the same number of stitches on this side of the panel and this side. So in my case I have 29 so I'll be counting 29 stitches from here to here and then I'm gonna place a marker and that's where I'm gonna start grafting my stitches, okay? So here are my bo both of my panels and uh, in order to seam on the sides, that's the next thing I'm doing, I have to put, I have to place the sleeves on the side and place a marker where they're gonna go, which would be around there for me. Just fold in half here and place your marker. I normally stretch the sleeves a bit, so I, I found out that fits better this way. And then you place a marker here where you want to start the sleeves. And then on the other side, perfect here. And then on the other side, you just fold this in half, fold this to the other side like this and place a marker in that same exact spot. If you want, you can count the rows as well. Okay, so now that I place markers for both my sleeves, the next step I'm going to be doing is I'm going to metric stitch all the way to where I place my marker on both sides. Now that I seam both sides together, I just didn't place the sleeves because we're gonna ma be making the ribbing. The whole project uh, becomes too heavy, so I'm making all the ribbing before I attach the sleeves to it. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this, um, it's a hundred centimeters, five millimeters needle that I actually got from, for free from Adi when I bought my Adi machine. So on that second loop of the stitch and on the second loop of the next stitch and the next one all the way around. And when I finish that, I can actually remove all the waste yarn on the bottom, so it's not on the way as well. So just put all the stitches from all the panels inside this needle to then start the ribbing on the bottom. Now, once you put all the stitches through this circular needle, and even though we are using a circular needle, we are not gonna work on the round, and that's because this is open. So you can't really work on the round, we're gonna be turning every time we get to one of the edges. So I'm going to just add yarn tail here. I'm working the same exact ribbing. You, uh, you can easily change it, make your own colors. And so after I detached this yarn tail here, 
I'm going to just slip through this first stitch like this and then I'm going to work one knitted stitch and one pearl. So I'm going to knit this one, make sure this loop is on the front of the back one so I can make the uh, pearl stitch. Knitted stitch I'm grabbing from there because this is twisted and I actually would have to do this. And this only gonna happen in this row because we just put this, all the stitches in the needles and sometimes they are not facing the right way. So one knitted stitch, one pearl. So now I made my last stitch here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my work turn my work and start working the other way so just here just remove that this first stitch and the second stitch as you can see it's a little V this is a knitted stitch the pearl stitch has a little loop on the top of the stitch and that's the pearl stitch so I'm going to knit where I have knitted stitches and I'm going to pearl where I have pearl stitches you have to make sure you always do it right otherwise the whole ribbon will look funny okay so pearl and knit pearl and knit to have the perfect ribbon. Now I'm making three, five, seven, nine, eleven rows before I finish because I want them all with the same width. Okay, so after I finish binding off my stitches, that's what I have. I'm on the last loop here, and from this last loop, I'm going to straight away start to cast on stitches to make the side ribbon to finish this to finish this um, cardigan so I'm going to go straight to that very next space here to grab a stitch and then the one here in the middle so I'm going to grab two two rows and then I'm going to skip this very next row and go to the next one after for one and then two on the very next row and then skip this one so every two I'm going to skip one so what I'm going to do on the white part so I don't make a mistake is that I'm going to grab for one two, three rows and then I'm going to skip one. One, two, three rows and then skipping one row. Always in that same stitch, otherwise it will look weird at the end. Skip one, and so repeat this all the way up and when you get here I'm gonna show you how I work this bit here now when you reach this part here where you have the waist yarn from the back panel what we're gonna do to keep this working yarn going that way we're going to actually make the stitch so grab that first stitch knit it and put it in the hook, in the needle. Grab the second stitch, knit it, and put it in the needle. So you're gonna be knitting the stitches so when you reach the halfway here, the working yarn is on that side. 
Otherwise, if you just slide the, the needle through the stitches, you won't have the working yarn on your, on, at the end to start the next row. So once I grab this last stitch, get into the middle of the work here, I'm just going to remove this waste yarn. And then now I'm going to turn the work this way and I'm going to start working the same way we did on the bottom ribbing. And I'm going to start working here in this first stitch, just removing it and then knit on the second one. Pull and knit, pull and knit all the way to the bottom and back. Okay, I'm going to do and then I'm going to do this. So three times with the gray, two with the white, two two and two, okay? So this is how our neck looks like now. So as I finished this one, I started picking up the stitches right straight after. So when I finish this last row, I finish them both on the right side with the same amount of stitches. So. It's just like keep going really, but it's divided in two because it was too much, too many stitches to put inside one needle. As you can see, it's very long and it's looking awesome, guys. So now I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the mattress stitch to seam this. So it's, it's gonna be seamless. So I'm going to put it through here and here and then back there to close this first gap here. And then I'm going to, let's see, I want it to kind of hide this part inside because it doesn't look really good. So I'm going to try and pick my two here and the same two here. Let's see. Then two on the other side and the same two here. There you go. And now I need to put the last sleeve here. Okay, and that's the last part of it. So I'm going to show you the rest of it and I'm going to show you me wearing it as well because I'm going to put this graft stitch for the sleeves in another tutorial like I did with all the other stitches. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure you subscribe and like this video. It makes a lot of difference for me. And as well, I'm going to leave the pattern for this beautiful thing on the description below so you guys can download and uh, add to your books as well. Okay, so if you want to know more about how to knit sleeves, I'm going to share this next video here, it's about that, okay? So you guys can perfectly join your sleeves to the body of your sweater. Thank you for watching again and I see you on the next week.